What's going on YouTube? I'm the mass man. Man that does it all in one take with low ass, basic ass technology with a webcam. Um not here today for a movie review. I'm kinda having a bit of commentary today. Having a little bit of commentary. Um I want to shout out the inspiration for this video. If you don't know about me, I am a wrestling fan. Now, I'm not the caliber of wrestling fan that I was growing up because I do not have cable. And WWE really hates YouTube and they will not allow you to get their shit on the site unless there's a crazy ass, funky ass looking picture and weird ass chick chipmunk sounds it's that shit is buried on the dark web i don't know what the big deal about you know people seeing a show that airs on cable uh i don't know why they go to such great lengths to protect their program but you know i'm not a there's probably a reason why i'm very poor and they're very rich so i just chalk it up to that um, but this this video is not about that. It's not even about WWE specifically, but it was inspired by one of their talents, and it brings me it in, it in, it inspired me because a little thing that he said I consider a problem that that exists in society today as a whole. Um, now there is this wrestler with the WWE. Um, he's a member of the team called the New Day. It's three black guys and they were initially promoted to be uh, a face in wrestling terminology, a face character is a good guy they were supposed to be good guys three good guys and the crowd didn't like them so they changed and transformed themselves into heels heels are bad guys and it got them over got it getting over in wrestling means it got them some traction it got them some a little bit of popularity a little bit of notoriety now one of the members of the new day i think the person who I saw, I think his name is Xavier Woods. And Xavier Woods goes by another name. I think his real name. And he does video games with various WWE wrestlers. I happened to stumble upon the one that he did with Sasha Banks. He played Sailor Moon with Sasha Banks. Uh, if I can find it after I you know, get somewhere with the internet, I try to leave a link in the description. So he did a video with Sasha Banks and, you know, they got to talking. And Sasha Banks came off as a lovely, really sweet person, really sweet person. I racially, she's very ambiguous. I eventually did figure out that she has some African blood in her because they said she's related to Snoop Dogg. She's supposedly his cousin. I think she's just simply mixed, but she's one of those extremely, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything offensive yet. I haven't got enough popularity for that, but she's, uh, I didn't I, I couldn't place her racially. I couldn't I couldn't looking at her I I wouldn't know what box to check for her. I wouldn't know what box to check for her racially. She she has a very unique look, but she seems like a a delightful human being. She seems like a wonderful wonderful person that would be a joy to be around. Again, not what this video is about. In the course of the video, they talked about this legendary match that occurred in a WWE event 
that goes by the name of NXT. NXT had a main had a main event <coughs> for the women's title. Um and they did a 30 minute Iron Man match. If you don't know what an Iron Man match is in pro wrestling, an Iron Man match or Iron Man matches are typically one hour and it's the most pinfalls that occurs before the time elapses. Whomever has the most pinfalls after the hour passes is the winner. So there could be multiple falls. There could be 16. Well, I don't think it'd be an even number. There could be 17, 15, whatever amount of falls. And you can just kill somebody. You can just get 10 falls on them and they get none on you. Whoever has the most. So in the course of the conversation, they got to talking about the match. And Xavier Woods, which I think is his name, uh, he said, I think this is one of the best matches I ever seen. And then I was talking to the I'm quoting him. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm quoting paraphrasing, but quoting. This is one of the best match I've ever seen. And I was talking to a guy. And I, he said that I think this is the best match I ever seen. And I had to think about it. And I'm like, I think this is the best match I ever seen. When I go back in my mind and I like, you know, except for nostalgia, you know, I, a lot of things like I'm not really a nostalgic person. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff isn't that good anymore. It's like, I don't really get like nostalgic except for like Undertaker losing at WrestleMania. That kind of got me. But it's like, oh, my childhood. It's like, but it's like, man, it's like, I'm not really. I think this may be the best match of all time. Stop. Mass man's talking now. Um, I feel like this is a problem. I feel like this is a problem. And I feel like the people of my generation, I was born in 89, do the math, I'm 26 years old. People in my age range, people who are 10 to 15 years older, people who are 10 to 15 years younger, are suffering from a condition <coughs> that I would like to call now nostalgia. This there's something going around that's telling people that shit that's happening now is the best shit ever. Now I told you that I can't see WWE, but this was a very popular match. <coughs> so it was on YouTube. And I managed to get it. And I saw the match. And I would heard a lot about the match before I saw the match. So I came in with some expectations. And I have seen wrestling matches before. I have seen Iron Man matches before. I have seen Shawn Michaels wrestle. I've seen Bret Hart wrestle. I've seen Bret Hart versus Steve Austin. I've seen Undertaker versus Mankind. I've seen a bunch of Triple H's matches. I've seen a lot of wrestling matches. I don't watch them so much today because the storylines are shit, but I watch them. And please, if you're not a wrestling fan, bear with me. This is not about wrestling. I'm just making a point. Um... I've seen a lot of wrestling matches and I saw this and there's there's a certain thing in wrestling called telling a good story. <laughs> there's a certain thing in wrestling called telling a story. It means that the actions that occur in the ring are not just meant to be flashy, are not just meant to be showy, but they're meant 
to have a point and a logic and get the crowd invested in what's going on in the ring to get invested in the in the journey in the process like people would get invested in other forms of sporting events like you would be invested in a football game that's very close and it's down to the wire you're supposed to get that sort of feeling from from a wrestling match because of the story that they're telling in the ring okay so so that you get the logic and i felt like this match may have been good from a worker or a storyteller's perspective you know it may have been good in in terms of telling a great a compelling story in the ring and telling a great story with the moves and making everything count and making everything matter and making everything important. I'm not trying to take that away from it. I'm not trying to take that away from the performers. I'm not trying to say that. But what happened and what people are doing is they're saying Okay, something good happened in my time. Something good happened in my lifetime. So it's the best that's ever happened. It's the best ever. This is the best match ever. And I'm like, it wasn't a particularly athletic match. Nobody did any kind of backflips. Nobody did a whole lot of drop kicks. It wasn't a lot of high flying. Not that it should have been. It wasn't a very technical match. It wasn't like wrist lock, neck holes. It wasn't Kurt Angleish. And um, uh, the best way I can describe Kurt Angle is think legitimate amateur wrestling. Think of how they wrestle in amateur wrestling. How they do the hip tosses and the arm bars and. They do their there's a form of that in in pro wrestling where they do a little bit of that to give it a more realistic feel. There wasn't any of that in the match or very little of that. It was just a great work match. So if you didn't know anything about wrestling, I don't think that this is the match that would make you a fan. I don't feel like Sasha Banks versus Bailey would make somebody who is not a fan of wrestling and who doesn't have a bias one way or the other. I don't feel like it would necessarily make them a fan. People in the comments section was like, oh, Sasha Banks is so good. She made a little girl cry. I was like, damn, she made a little girl cry. But the little girl who she made cry was Bailey's sister. Who believed that Bailey was getting her ass kicked for real. So that's that's that really makes it less impressive. I'm thinking she made some random no name child cry and she just made the the girl's younger five or six year old sister cry that's not that impressive to me and the cry was chanting and whooping and hollering saying chants like this is wrestling this is wrestling before the match even began before it even began, they were chanting and yelling and hooping and hollering. So, let me get to the point that I was that I that I've been trying that I've been setting up for. That I've been setting up for. There's a thing going around called nostalgia. People of today have no respect for history. They have no respect for content, for context, and they have no sense of proportion and no sense of scale, and they don't have the vocabulary or the articulation to put 
things into proper perspective. If you like this match, if you liked the job that Sasha Banks and Bailey did, all that needed to be said is that this is a best match of the year candidate. This is one of the best matches I've seen from any wrestling promotion that's been done. And I think I think this is the clear winner. That's all that needed to be said. And then it could have been considered within its time. It could have been considered within a certain framework. It could have been compared to things its contemporaries. But when you jump out of the box and say something is not just the best of the year, not just the best women's match, but one of the best matches ever or the best match ever, just because it happened a week ago, I feel like you don't have any respect for the people who built shit up. You don't have no respect for people who created and you don't have any desire to go back in your history and look at other creators so that you can get the formulas that they created and that they made and what they did. People who came before you are important. They are not to be forgotten. People who put in work, who built the platform that you are eating off of, they are significant and they shouldn't be swept under the rug. I see this in music. I see this in movies. I see this in television. I see this in all forms of media. Everybody is saying this is the best movie ever. This is the best rapper ever. This is the best singer ever. And they, and I'm like, who are 10 other people from the past who you would compare to this person you're talking about now? Like name, oh, Justin Bieber, he's the best. Na name 10 other R&B stars from 20 years ago that he's kicking their ass. Name 10. Do you even know 10? Do you know anybody besides him? What knowledge? You don't have a context that you're putting this shit in. You're just saying shit because you like something and you don't have enough in you to say, I like this. I fucks with this. This is good. This is decent. This has this in it. I saw these elements. I saw these techniques displayed. You can't have a, a coherent logic. <sighs> logical conversation you just you're just simply spilling out your feelings it's like you're doing what i know i'm doing but you don't know you're doing it like you don't know that you just speaking what you feel you feel like you speaking fact you feel like you can actually back up the shit you say. You feel like you got perspective for the shit that you say, and you don't. You're saying something is the greatest compared to nothing at all. You're saying this is the greatest, but I'm not even comparing it to anything else. It's just the greatest. It's greater than what, I would ask you, and your response, you would just say everything. It's the greatest ever. Compared to what? And you wouldn't know what to say. So, I just really hate this, this phenomenon going around called nostalgia. <sighs> I 
I'm a huge fan of R. Kelly. Huge fan of his music. <clears throat> of his music. I'm a huge fan of him as an artist. What he does musically. <sighs> and I honestly feel that he's legitimately one of the greatest of all time. But because he's written for the greatest and he's produced a lot of hits. Man, I'm struggling, man. I eat a poor diet, man. I eat a poor diet. I don't have the nutrition I should have. Uh, but I legitimately feel like R. Kelly is one of the best singer <clears throat> songwriters to ever do it. But I'm not going to make that statement now because I don't have the finances to go back and purchase every Bobby Womack album, every Sam Cooke album, every <clears throat> every Teddy Pendergrass album, and the dozens and dozens of people's names who I'm not even aware of off the top of my head. I have respect for people who paved the way for my favorite artists. Because R. Kelly really got popping and really got popular in my lifetime. But I'm not, even though he's my favorite, even though he's tremendously talented, even though he does fantastic music and has a fantastic voice, I'm not going to say that he's one of the greatest without first going to listen to the hundreds of people who came before him and taking the time to do the research, taking the time to understand music composition, taking the time to understand how songs are put together, taking the time to understand how lyrics are written, taking the time to listen to all of the people who came before them and trying to break down in my mind what made them great, sampling their product, sampling and consuming their work, and then making that comparison. I believe that R. Kelly is one of the greatest of all time and that he can hang, but I don't have an extensive enough knowledge of music as a whole. Even the genre I like the most, R&B, to make that statement. I feel like he's fantastic, but I don't have enough people or enough work to compare it to. Just because he's famous and just because he's made a lot of hits on the charts and just because he writes his own shit as far as I know doesn't mean that if I would have listened to all of the other people who came before him, who came to prominence, that I wouldn't be so impressed that I would downgrade R. Kelly from being the greatest to just being average. Maybe he's average. And I just think he's great. Because he came up in my time. And because I don't know my history. And because I don't know. What was paved. What other people did. 
Nobody can take away R. Kelly's work. Nobody can take away the things that he actually produced and the accomplishment that he made and the hits and all of the babies that got made off of R. Kelly. Can't nobody take them babies off of R. Kelly. Can't nobody take them babies away. But I just want to state that if you're going to say that something is the greatest this, if you're going to say that something is the greatest that, if you're going to make these kinds of statements, these kinds of statements of fact, and you're talking about something that happened in your lifetime, then you need to have some kind of a historical perspective. You need to have some kind of appreciation for what came before. You have to know the history of the field and who was the movers and shakers and what they did. Otherwise, you're just talking out of your ass. I think Sasha Banks is a wonderful person. And I don't know anything about Bailey, but she seemed like a competent, skilled performer. And I want the women's division in wrestling to get all of the the praise and the recognition that they should have gotten years ago. I want them to go as high as they can go. I don't I don't have no ill will towards them. I just want people to stop saying that shit that happened two weeks ago is the best shit of all time is the greatest ever is one of the greatest we need courses taught on adjectives people need to step up their adjective game because their adjective game is very weak mine is too I have a weak adjective game, but that doesn't mean I'm going to say this is the best. This is the worst. I, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to step back from those kinds of statements and other people should do the same. This is this was mainly a rant. And I think I'm going to put a rant in the title. Um, I don't know if I'm going to call this videos nostalgia or a sign of the times, a rant on today's youth. I don't know what I'm going to call this video, but I'm just very annoyed. I'm just very annoyed by the best ever people. Please miss me with this best ever this best ever that. Please miss me with that bullshit. Something can be good. Something can be great. Something can be all right. Say what's great about it. Say what you liked about it. Be specific. Be meticulous. And be able to knock down something else. In the same with the same method that you big something else up. I like a lot of things now. But I may find... Then when I really do the research, they're not as good as I think they are. But um, that's just my perspective. As anyway, I'm the mass man. I just tell it how I see it. I don't speak truth because I don't have it. I just speak sincerely. Um, as always, tell me what you think. Comment on this long ass video um let me know what you think if you disagree if you don't agree like dislike subscribe you know help a brother out help me step up my tech give me some pointers have a conversation with me school me on the game help me win it life help me get rich on youtube rich in the media rich at life i'm trying to get where i need to go making these videos, giving my perspective for whatever that's worth. Um, you know, just help me out, man. Help me learn. Help me, help me grow. You know, maybe I was wrong about this video. Maybe the shit that's happening now is the best shit that's ever happened. 
Maybe I just don't have the resources to know the history that everything is great and everything is the greatest ever, that everything every day being produced is the greatest ever. But, you know, I'm being sarcastic right now. I'm not being, I'm being insincere right now. But I'm even sincere about my insincerity. But uh, anyway, I'm the mass man. Do what you do. Hit me up. Let me know if there's anything you want me to talk about in as far as the media goes. If you want relationship advice or how to effectively deal with people, I'm probably the worst person you could ever talk to about those subjects. But I'll field them out, you know, and try to give you the best information I can. I am the mass man. That is my perspective. And I will see you in the next video.